Hello everybody, my name is Eric, just got finally got everything set up, and uh, I hope you enjoy the quality of this video. I finally got all my uh, new hardware, so this is actually being done on looking glass, which means it's basically like having uh, how some streamers use a 2PC ca uh, set up with a capture card. So what that means is we can have a totally stealthy VM, and... Uh, we can use a real graphics card. So instead of being stuck at a terrible resolution, uh, this is 4K60. I'm just going to actually up the scaling a bit so it's easier for you to see. Now, let's check this out. So this is an ongoing campaign that I saw from some of the threat hunters I follow on X. And what we have here is a fake 7-zip installer that is actually going to contain a rat. And we've got defenders actually small enough to catch it for once. That's how you know we got a fresh VM is because I haven't neutered defender yet. But for now, we can fix it this way. So this is, in fact, a remote access Trojan, disguised. Uh, now this is an MSI X. And after adding the Microsoft Store, uh, we are now ready to rumble. Now this is a a Microsoft. Well, it's not a Microsoft, but it's an MSI, MSI X app, and it looks legit. Everything looks right, uh, except for the publisher. That's a bit fishy. This is signed. And now that we have installed this, uh, let's see. Okay, now we get an EXE. Oh, that's never a good sign. Okay, I'm actually going to make a copy of this before... Oh, yeah, you can't tab out of user account control. Okay, then I guess we do have to. And... Oh, maybe actually this is the real. No, that looks like 7-Zip to me. In fact, I actually already had 7-Zip uh, installed because I was if you're wondering why we have that file. Uh, I was testing some uh, fake uh, pirated games... And, uh, okay. So, let's see what's happened. Let's just get sys internals going and see how ratted we are. And I think we can actually use the real 7-zip to open this MSI X as well to see what's in here. So here we have the PowerShell scripts. So, oh, and it even comes with 7-zip uh, files. And we got starting script wrapper.ps1. Okay, this might actually be required by the... Oh, I don't like that. Oh, it might just be signature. So this is actually from the PS1. This is, like, needed for this to work. Content types. So the payload is actually in a 7-zip file, which is kind of interesting. Now let's see what other juicy bits might be left in C users public. That doesn't look like 7-zip to me. Then we got this... 7-Zip Installer, which is actually from Igor Pavlov, so that much is real. So let's just go to Virus Total. I, I never have a lot of faith in scanners, but what a scanner will do is it'll tell me, okay, is this detected? Which could give me some indication that this, or at least that it's where it's really from. Ye oh. Uh, yeah. I, I don't like the name of that. Client 32. Yeah, because this is a rat. Ew, I, I don't like that. One bit, terminate process, execution. And we can see this thing's got a few things loaded up. This PCI uh, 32 DLL looks like it could be something of interest. And if we go through strings, uh, once we get past the fake... Oh, this is, looks like a .NET app. And here is the command and control server for the rat. It's already connected... Given we can't see the parent, if we escalate this, we might learn a bit more about our payload. Must have... So the payload... Parent terminated. All right. Now, I thought it might be interesting to install Wireshark. The reason we're using that instead of MITM proxy is because we're not going to see... Like, this is not a HTTPS service. This is different than an info stealer. With a rat, there's a constant stream back and forth. Sometimes the control of the rat can actually be automated, but these guys seem to be waiting and seeing. So you may be thinking, so how do people end up on the 7-zip site? And to my understanding, this is mostly uh, through abuse of Google's advertising platform. But there are other sources as well through SEO abuse. It's not just the ads on a Google search page that can be easily manipulated. Unfortunately, through the use of fake backlink services, you can also uh, create bogus organic search results. Now, let's see. I was just checking to see if it was going to instantly close, because that would be hilarious if it did happen. 
And we know thanks to uh, Process Explorer that the command and control server for this uh, has the IP address 91.149. We can see a few hits to this. Fake URL.htm. Seems legit to me. Keep alive, okay. And this was a reply to us. This is not human readable, but Let's see what else it does. It seems like every 50 seconds we send a keep alive request, just confirming that we're still connected. Now let's see what happens if we kill the process and then restart it. Assuming that it has this possibility that it's gonna crash, because sometimes rats will actually set their integrity. So we'll just wait a second. And we will kill this application. Okay. And then we'll run it again. Now we're going to get a flurry of activity. It's like binary data to me. Net support manager. And these are still keep alives. That's interesting. So it seems like net support manager is actually a real program. Yeah, and just like the website implies, uh, this is in fact a legitimate, or at least it's got a website that would make you think this is for legitimate remote access. And this one was not crypted. Yeah, this has been heavily used, and it makes sense because the benefit of using this type of a tool, although antivirus vendors today are starting to detect it for obvious reasons, is that because this is not a dedicated malware tool, it could go undetected quite a bit longer. This seems to also be branded as cross-tech remote control. I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna pop a, a look at the binary to see what we can uh, find out. But given this is legitimate software, I'm not expecting it to be that obfuscated. Because they, clearly the threat actors just took this, they didn't do anything. The only thing that makes me a bit concerned about this software, this isn't the first time I've seen remote access software used for ratting. I think I actually made another video about this a while ago. But the thing that concerns me about this setup is why... If your software is legitimate, why would you focus on making it easy to install discreetly? There, there is no good reason to install remote access software discreetly. Okay, this is a very small program. Okay, so you do that. Call into, okay. Oh, there, there is basically nothing in here. Oh, it must be, it must be in a DLL. Yeah, it's this PCI CLDL. Oh. This one. And this is a much bigger program, being over three megabytes. Makes far more sense. And in this client file must be the command and control settings because it's not in the binary, which makes sense given this isn't a malware builder output. Yep, gateway address is here. Although, interestingly, we got port 443, but there's no actual encryption. Actually might break MITM proxy, given it would it would expect that it was encrypted, but it's not going to have an issue here. This must be some sort of license. So this is actually where everything goes. And looking at the file sizes and lack of obvious binary data, it seems like this remote VNC protocol must only activate when it is requested, because otherwise uh, we would be seeing a lot more activity. We see it. Okay, let's. I got a bit going on here, because if there actually was, like, a, a frame of this screen resolution would be much bigger. So right now this is just waiting to see if the threat actor is going to bother with us. So that is going to be all for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. First one uh, using the new setup. Uh, let me know what you think of that. In the comments below. I'm actually going to make a video on how I set this up and how it works. So if you're interested in setting up a really cool VM setup, that, and this can also be used to play games, uh, run apps that don't work on Linux natively, it can be done for a lot of things. So I think it's really cool. Please subscribe if you're interested in that. Watch out for fake downloads, especially in this case, it's distributed like a Windows Store app, which Real7Zip is not. That's all for me for now. Bye!